Hey everybody, today we are here to tell you about one of our favorite activities and about the 10 different places that you can park your boat overnight in Racine. And one of them is free. Absolutely free. So stick around, we'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Welcome back, everybody, and here we are. That, yeah. Russ, you and I, we love boating. Oh, we? yeah. Yeah, we can't think of anything better to do than getting out on the boat. Um, we absolutely love it. Absolutely. And during COVID, when we weren't able to go cruising. Well, actually, that's uh, what got us that's into boating. got us into, the, we ended up buying our own boat. Yeah, so, so what's that, ironic is that yeah. both you and I actually have boating from back in our past. Yes. So when I was young, I can remember when I was a teenager, us going to visit my aunt and uncle in Michigan. Uh, they lived over in the Bay City area of Michigan. And I can remember us going and taking out their ski boat. And oh my goodness, I still remember having a Titanic moment on the front of their ski boat. Because <laughs> they had a ski boat with um, like a rail at the front and as a... 12 or 13 year old, I can't remember exactly how it was. I put my feet underneath the rail and got to sit on the bow of the boat and fly across the water. Thought I was flying across the water. <laughs> What's your boat experiences growing up? My boat experiences growing up, well, there are many. I used to do competition skiing. How old were you when you did water skiing stuff? Probably about 17, 18. Okay. Uh, then I used to do scuba diving uh, and one of my friend's dad had a boat and we used to go out fishing. So the only time you ever did like the speedboat thing was obviously when you were water skiing. Not yeah. so much the rest mm -hmm. of the time. So, so our boat experience goes back really a long time. But as an adult, you didn't own a boat yourself. And I no. never owned a boat either. So it was kind of amazing during COVID when we did this. And that was kind of the beginning of our boat journey. But it also brought us into in Racine. Where can you boat? So today, what we're going to talk about is there are... 10 other places that you can park your boat overnight and varying fees and varying options for that. Yeah, so yeah. let's start with the first three that we wanted to talk about, which are the ones that you can actually own your own slip. So most of them land between 10 to 20,000. And one of those is Gaslight Point. And yeah. they have, how many slips do they have? Let's check our notes here. Um, those are privately owned. They have 230 of them though. Yeah. That's a lot. So mm -hmm. those are constantly coming up for sale. However, Gaslight Point, all of these ones that are ownership ones, um, they do also have condo fees. Uh, so we looked taxes. up one today. It wasn't Gaslight Point, but it was Lakeshore Towers, which is the other one that we're going to talk about here. They yeah. only have 53 slips. But uh -huh. um, we looked up one today. It was a 54-foot slip, and it is... Um, it was $12,000 that it was listed for, yeah. but the condo fees are 500 bucks a month. You also get included with that a parking place in an underground garage. And both of these, both Gaslight Point and Lakeshore Towers, both have swimming pools. And you both, you get amenity, you get access to those swimming pools as well as yeah. part of your condo fees. You get all the condo mm -hmm. amenities. Yep. Um, get your water included with that. Um, it doesn't look like, uh, it doesn't look like electricity is automatically included though. So we've got Gaslight Point, we have Lakeshore Towers. Those are both ownership only. They don't really have rentals except for if you're the owner of the slip, you are allowed to rent it yourself. But it's not like there's a management company. Yeah. Um, or like a yacht club or things like that we're going to talk about here. So those two are there. The other one that's over there is uh, the corner house. They have slips as well. The restaurant, the corner house, they have slips that they own, but those are not, you can't own them yourself. Yeah. But you can park there. It's like parking. You can park there. It's like parking outside a restaurant. Yeah, yeah so. exactly. So if you're a boater, it's really nice to know that the corner house does have slips because you can pull up to them on the water and yeah. get out. Um, they have a tiki bar outside of their place in the summertime. Uh -huh. So you can get out of your boat, go up to the tiki bar, or go inside the restaurant and have dinner. So we've got two so far we've talked about. Those are ownership. The vast majority of them, however, are rentals. So you've got, first of all, the boathouse, which is up the river a little bit. Yeah. The boathouse has 30 slips. Yep, exactly. There's some room for transients there as well. Yep. Um, but yeah, you can rent one out for the season um the next rental we want to talk about though is kind of a newer it's not newer but it's newer it's under new management and that's river's yes. end 
River's End. Yeah. yeah. So River's End is under new management. Um, it used to be Pews and John Stock. And that, I'm interested to see what happens there. Yeah. Because we had some experience. They do have the big pull out there. Um, the one thing we knew about Pews in the past is that they had the best mechanic for yeah. yachts in the area. Like, So the question is, is he still there? Is I Stevie still there? I don't know. So anyway, so you've got River's End. And then, of course, we have Riverside. Now, Riverside probably has some of the best. One of the things Riverside does that no other yacht clubs do around here is they do have a full-on sales yeah. area like you can list your boat with them and sell it through them riverside yeah. riverside also has some of the biggest um sailboats in the area yeah. are mm -hmm. and they're stored at riverside that's the other thing yeah. one of the advantages of riverside and i'm sure of river's end because river's end had um or pews had storage as well yeah. but riverside and pews they all have storage where some of these others do not yeah so next one that we're going to talk about or i would say the largest one in Racine, before we get to the yacht clubs, is Reef Point. So yeah. Reef Point Marina has, well, basically it has about a thousand slips, over a thousand slips. A hundred of them is transient. Now, we didn't really talk yeah. about transient slips too much, did we? No. So transient slip is where if you're moving, you know, down the coast, you want to go away for a week, mm -hmm. you can pull into a slip and just book by the night. Right. Or some of them will let you book uh, by the week. Stay, yeah, some of We do have a lot of people who, while they're doing the Great Loop, will stop in Racine. Yes. And so they need what are called transient slips. Yeah, so they're just a temporary slip for them to use. Um, we've talked about Reef Point a little bit. They have a lot of transient slips, and some of these others have transient slips. So uh, the yacht clubs all have transient slips. Reef Point, however, is the largest, and they are actually managed, um, they are owned by the city of Racine. Mm -hmm. But they are managed by a company called F3. Most of these others that we've talked about so far don't have a lot of amenities. They don't have pools. They don't have hot no. tubs. They don't have grilling areas. They just kind of have a slip. Yeah, um, some of them have showers and stuff like that, but, you yep. know, changing. Now let's talk about the uh, yacht clubs. Racine Yacht Club. <laughs> we have the Racine Yacht Club, who, by the way, make a very clear on their website that they are not posh, <laughs> that they are yeah. not stuck up. <laughs> And um, and that they are certainly not Thurston Howell type. No. I think certain yacht clubs do have a more upscale um, entity. And I would say the Racine Yacht Club, of the yacht clubs in this area, probably has the most upscale experience. Probably. But the other yacht clubs here, we've got Harbor Light Yacht Club, which we've already talked about a little bit in regards to the boathouse. Yep. What's ironic about Harbor Light Yacht Club is it doesn't appear that they have any slips. They have no boat slips. Yeah. But they're a yacht club. So they should be mentioned. And they seem to focus mostly on outdoor entertainment and food. And the same thing is true for the third one, which is the Fifth Street Yacht Club. Yeah, Fifth Street Yacht Club is on the river. They mm -hmm. don't have a pool. So that's one of the main no. reasons for me. Like Reef Point's got the pool, the hot tubs, and the grilling areas. That's why we love them. That's why mm -hmm. we've always been at that entity. Fifth Street Yacht Club doesn't really have amenities other than their... It's got a clubhouse. Their, they have a clubhouse. They have they have water uh, and they have electric. catering done on like three nights, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yep. There's meals available there. When we talk about the Racine Yacht Club, though, they also don't have a pool, but they have a little beach. Yeah. They do have a, like a, a little beach that the kids can play in and and hang around in and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So that's kind of cute. Yeah. You know. Now we've talked about nine different entities, and all of these cost money in various amounts. But then there's one more, and yeah, we said we would tell indeed. you about the one that was. Free. 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 Here's the key and here's the catch. There is no electric. There is no water hookups. <laughs> if you're stocked up with water on your boat or yes. you have a water maker. And you have a generator. And you may so have you a don't generator. Need, you don't need power. You don't need water. Why We're not seen. try the public dock? We see them sometimes in the summer. They park mm -hmm. up there. They stay for the weekend. Yep. And then they go on. And then they go. I think a lot of boaters don't realize that Racine no. has free docks. I think they think it's just for... The boat because the, the boat and that's a public dock where they can easily get on and off the boat but what people yep. don't know is that you can stay there overnight you can you can stay there overnight in fact you can stay there for multiple overnights i don't actually know how long i don't you know can if stay. there's any limitation i've never I seen don't a know sign if there is. with any limits on there nope there's uh, no signs but with limitations. i do know that i've seen several boats parked up there for a weekend overnight. at least if Launch you don't need launched. electric and you don't need water 
then there's no place better to pull up than there. But you're really close to Smoked on the Water. That's nice. So you can hear the live music going on of an evening. You're also really you're easy walking easy up into walking downtown. Easy walking distance into downtown. Two blocks and away. And all the restaurants and bars. Yeah, that's it for Racine. We've got some really great boating opportunities. Yeah, so the word Racine actually means Root River in one of the native languages. Yeah. And so you can't really live in a city that's named for water <laughs> and not expect yeah. to have a really big culture of people who are on the water. Um, and if you want to check out another thing, here we're going to put up a link to Russ's video that is all about how you can get out on the water for under $150. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us, guys. And we will see you next week. And hopefully, have a great day in Racine. Bye for now. Bye for now. If you got any value from this content, do us a favor. Click like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our content. But most importantly, drop us a comment below because we'd love to get your feedback about what's most important to you for other people to know about living in Racine.